I have been refining my solar capture and post-processing techniques and wanted to pass along a few subtle changes I've made to my standard processes. I had seen some debate about SER versus AVI, 16-bit versus 8-bit, how many frames to stack, and other issues, and decided to do some detailed testing. Over a period of a couple of days, I pointed my hydrogen alpha scope at the sun and did a variety of A-B testing where I changed a single variable to see what impact would be on my final result. I then repeated each test several times to try to average out any impacts from seeing variability between captures. I should make the caveat that these tests were with a LUNT 100MT double-stacked hydrogen alpha solar telescope. If you have a significantly different aperture or focal length, your mileage may vary, but the concepts should still apply. The first thing I looked at was capturing in 16-bit versus 8-bit while in sharp cap. The claim was 8-bit was faster and you don't gain anything using 16-bit on a monochrome source like the sun. Here's what I found. If you're imaging the solar disk or any region that includes a hotter, brighter area, then 8-bit does not provide sufficient dynamic range to show the desired luminosity changes. I then looked at images that did not have hot regions, images where the brightness did not vary much at all. In those cases, with 8-bit capture, I was getting about 125 frames per second versus 78 frames per second at 16-bit, and the increased speed did seem to make a very subtle improvement in sharpness. I don't know if it's going to come through on the YouTube video, but I could see a very tiny improvement in detail with 8-bit versus 16-bit in this case. However, for simplicity's sake, the difference is really a subtle nuance and you could leave your setup at 16-bit and do just fine. I then checked saving as an SER versus as an AVI. SER provides uncompressed raw video in higher quality than AVI does at the same or faster capture speed. The answer is SER hands down. The next thing I studied was what level to fill the histogram in SharpCap. I had previously gone for 75 to 80 percent in all cases, but saw that many of my full disk images were overexposed in the hot sunspot areas. My worry was that if I underexposed the image, I'd lose the details in the dimmer parts of the photo. You can see here that a 50 percent histogram provides a far better image than 75 percent. My new rule of thumb is if I have a full disk image or any area with a hot spot, set the histogram to 50 to 60 percent. If I have a dimmer area, like a prom on the limb, I can increase it to 70 to 90 percent. Finally, I wanted to look at how many frames to stack. The trade-off is noise in fewer stacked images versus image clarity in more stacked images. I captured a thousand frames and then stacked 50, 75, 100, and 200 at various magnifications on the sun over several sessions. What I determined was the optimal amount seemed to be 80 to 100 frames. In this photo, I compared the same SER file stacked with 50 frames versus 100 frames. There is definitely more mottling at high magnification in the 50 frame image, leading me to conclude that 50 frames are still too noisy. It looked like 80 to 100 frames tended to give the best results.